everybody, it's Holly here today for Marker Pop, and today I'm going to be using this Boo set from Waffle Flower Crafts. This is another collaboration with Big Bear and Bird. So uh, this card here is my original card, and I used some Wilted Violet Distress Ink on some Bristol cardstock. Now the card in the video here, I'm going to actually use some Distress Ink cardstock along with the Wilted Violet Distress Oxide Ink. When I made the first card, I didn't get very good smooth smoothness, you could say, with the mini ink blending tool foam. So I really wasn't happy with that. So I thought, let's try the oxide ink and see if I get a little better. And I'm also using the Distress uh, watercolor paper to see if it works a little better as well. I just haven't been happy with these mini ink blending foams lately. They just don't, they leave streaks and they're just not very good. So anyway, let's go ahead and get started and see what happens. So I'm going to go ahead and start using the Wilted Violet Distress Oxide Ink and I'm using the Large Cloud Stencil from My Favorite Things. Now after I have the um, ink down, I'm going to go ahead and take a blank or a plain uh, mini ink blending tool foam and I'm just going to kind of go over the edges to kind of help smooth that out some. The Distress Oxide inks blend like butter, like they move around a lot easier. So you can kind of do that with a plain one that doesn't have any ink on it. So once I'm done creating my clouds here in the background, I'm just moving the stencil around to use the different shapes. The other fun thing about this stencil is you can actually flip it over and use the reverse side. So you technically get eight different types of clouds um, with this large one and there's also a small one available now as well. I also die cut a piece of circle from some posted tape, posted paper, and I use that to create a mast where I'm going to have a moon in the middle of my sky there. So once I'm all done creating my background, I'm going to go ahead and use a sand eraser to go ahead and fix up any mistakes I might have where it might be a little too streaky. And I also like to use the sand eraser to give me a special effect um, within the distressing here. You'll see when I do the moon. So I'm going to go ahead and reverse the stencil and then fill in the center with some smoky slate or hickory smoke, I'm sorry, hickory smoke distress ink. And I'm going to fill that in to create the background for my moon. And I'm just using a light hand and filling that in there. With the sand eraser, I just went ahead and I take it over the moon area and a couple spots on the cloud. And what that does with the moon area is it picks up some of the distress ink and it leaves like a crater effect, I guess you'd say, in the moon. It just kind of leaves some extra spots. So once I have that all done, I'm going to go ahead and splatter the background with some water. I'm just going to use the distress sprayer and I'm just going to pull the handle out and just kind of splatter it on there into some dots and then I'm just going to use a paper towel to pick that up and then when I'm all done I'm just going to set that aside to dry. This really isn't like a fancy technique, this is kind of your standard distress ink um, technique you can pretty much do here. <laughs> but then you can kind of see how it gives that sand razor help give that moon the crater effect and then with the water it helps add it up a little bit. I'm just going to do a second layer and then I'm just going to go ahead and dab it one more time to get the look that I'm really going for. And you can heat it with your heat tool as well or just set it aside. We're going to go ahead and stamp the images using the Mini Misty and I forgot to mention that I was using the smooth side of that distressing cardstock. Now for my images I'm going to go ahead and use a piece of Bristol cardstock and I'm using the Bristol Smooth and I'm going to go ahead and stamp them with the Ranger Archival Black Ink. This is my favorite ink for watercoloring. Um, VersaFine is really great if you like to watercolor as well. Um, I don't like to emboss my images that often, so I really like this archival ink. Um, it, doesn't, it just works a little better for me as far as watercoloring goes. And then we're going to go ahead and watercolor them in with the distress markers. So I'm going to stamp it the image twice to make sure I get a nice dark impression. These stamps were new. This is the first time I used the set, so this is only the second time I did an impression with the um, ink with the stamps. So I'm going to clean them off and put them back on my sheet here and then we'll go ahead and get the distress markers out and we'll get coloring. Okay so I'm going to go ahead and start coloring and I'm using the distress markers directly onto the images and then I'm using the Nuvo water brushes. Um, I have the fine and the medium but I believe I only use the medium but you could use both. So I'm going to go ahead and put the list of the colors that I'm using on the screen here for you. I'm going to go ahead and play some music and then I'll be back.
Now that my images are all colored in, I'm going to go ahead and use the coordinating dies to cut them out. I'm going to adhere them through the cardstock with some washi tape, and then I'm going to run them through my Big Shot. And I'm also going to go ahead and die cut my background panel with the clouds and the moon. And I'm using the Blueprints 15. This is a retired Blueprints from MFT. And I'm using the stitch rectangle die that's in that set um, to die cut that background piece. I'm going to go ahead and put the background panel in back into the Misty, and I'm using the little sentiment that came in the stamp set that says Boo. And I'm going to go ahead and stamp that down, and I'm also using that same archival black ink for that. And then once I have that on there, I'm going to go ahead and adhere my images to the front of the card panel using some Scotch 3M foam tape. And I'm just putting that in different spots on the images, and I'm going to go ahead and set them up where I want them. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some Nouveau Drops in the glitter the clear glitter and I'm just adding that on different parts of the images and then I'll set that aside to dry for a second. When you use the Nouveau drops like that you want to make sure you spread them out a little bit so they're not super thick like they are because they, you can make your own enamel dots with these. So I just spread it a little thin with the tip there to kind of just give it a nice a little cover on my images. I'm going to go ahead and create a, a uh, side folding A2 size card base from some black cardstock. And I'm going to go ahead and score it at four and a quarter and fold it in half. And since I already put my images onto my main panel and they're puffed up some, I'm going to go ahead and use some liquid glue to run it around the back of my image there, my panel, and then attach that to the front of the card base. I don't want to run some adhesive runner over it and create any creases or wrinkles in my card panel. So liquid glue is great for this. And then you just put something heavy on top of it, or I use my bone folder to kind of smoosh it around a little bit to make sure to hear very well. That pretty much finishes up my card for today, so I hope you're starting on your Halloween cards. So thanks for watching, and I will see you again really soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.